Dean Obadala has a piece at CNN about Trump's rally in Texas over the weekend. It shows exactly why he's so dangerous. Mr. Uh, Obadala writes this. There are times when we should ignore the rhetoric of twice impeached former President Donald Trump. And then there are times we must not because his statements are potentially dangerous to our nation. Trump's comments at his Texas rally on Saturday fall into the latter category. No kidding. I, I, I mean, I, I think I mentioned this yesterday, but, you know, his Trump, his claim at the rally that those treasonous pigs who've been charged in the January 6th attack on the Capitol are being, quote, treated so unfairly. And his his incredible comment that he that he might pardon them. He said, quote, if I run and if I win, we will treat those people from January 6th fairly. And if it requires pardons, we'll give them pardons. Uh, but more alarming than that was when Trump urged the scum who were at this this rally, this this pig's trough, this rally, to listen to the demon when he urged those people to engage, quote, in the biggest protests we have ever had, end quote. If the prosecutors investigating him and his financial dealings, quote, do anything wrong or illegal, end quote. You know, it's one thing to demonstrate. Everybody has that idea, but we know what he means when he says this. This is more dog whistle or dog piss comments that only these white brain dead uh, cult followers of his pick up on. He wants more January 6 riots, more dead people, more violence. You know, you think back to uh, December 20, uh, 2020, last uh, December a year ago, when Trump called for a protest because he felt he'd been wronged in the 2020 election. He had been wronged. And the end result of that was the Capitol attack a month later. And Trump obviously knows how that played out. He, he, see, Trump has never been held responsible for any filthy act or uh, uh, illegal act or act of violence or, or disgusting act that he's ever committed. He's never been held accountable. And he's going to continue until he is held accountable. And to me, holding him accountable, I have my own ideas, but the way the U.S. justice system works, probably jail for this pig, this demon. That's why common sense says that Trump now calling for these scum to mass again in huge numbers to uh, to to help him right any of these perceived wrongs that are constantly being done against him. That should ring alarm bells. And especially when this son of a bitch insinuates that if you commit acts of violence in his name, He'll consider pardoning you if if he becomes president again. I, I, I mean, what, what, why is that allowed to continue? No, seriously. Is, is that more of this free speech nonsense? That a person has a right to incite violence against the United States, against the Constitution, against each other? Because that person has a right of free speech. There is no such thing as a right of totally free speech. It's just not true. There are certain things you can't say without consequences. I'm, I'm not going to go down the list, but it was a Supreme Court justice who famously said you can't falsely cry fire in a crowded theater, for example, because of the ensuing stampede and the number of people who will die. 
there are restrictions on speech. There just are. So, as Mr. Uh, Obadiah points out here, oh, I'm sorry, Obadala, keep pronouncing his name wrong. He says, he writes, in normal times, hearing an American political leader, leader make such statements would be jarring. But this is far beyond normal. This is dangerous, given that just over a year ago, there was a violent attack on the Capitol by Trump supporters based on a lie Trump had created and spread about election fraud. And and this isn't the first time that Trump has expressed sympathy for those who were part of that what Christopher Ray, the FBI director, has called an act of domestic terrorism. For example, uh, ahead of a September rally this past fall in support of those arrested, Trump released a statement saying, quote, our hearts and minds are with the people being persecuted so unfairly relating to the January 6th protest, end quote. Protests. They're terrorists. So does all of this mean that Trump does not believe that these rioting scum, these cowardly little white racist pricks who injured over 140 police officers, some very seriously, because these cowardly pricks used batons and poles and chemical sprays and other weapons, does Trump believe they shouldn't face consequences? like him, for every filthy act he's done in his useless life? Obadala cites an example. A Texas resident, Donald Hazard, was arrested and charged in December for allegedly assaulting Capitol Police. According to court records, Hazard grappled with police officers during the riot, leading to one being, quote, knocked unconscious with injuries to his head, foot, and arm, end quote. A December release from the Department of Justice indicated that Hazard was detained pending further proceedings. So Trump would like to see people like this freed. Or maybe Trump's upset with the prosecution of, oh, here's one, Jeffrey Sabol, S-A-B-O-L, who not only assaulted cops but helped drag a wounded officer face down into the crowd so others could beat him. You've seen that video, the dragging him down the steps, right? According to a court filing, this prick took drastic measures at the Capitol on January 6th because he had, quote, reached a mental breaking point, end quote. And this bastard's still detained. Maybe Trump uh, will pardon the 11 members of uh, the Oath Keepers should they be convicted on charges of seditious conspiracy. Huh? All of this is just to point out the obvious. It should be obvious to all of us who are concerned about what is going on. Trump and his filth, his scum in, the, in, in this country's politics, in the House and the Senate, and on the scum media in this country, they're all working in coordination to bring about violence in this country because it's only during those moments of violence, ask any fascist uh, or any historian who, who has charted the rise of fascism in various countries. One of the first things you do is to induce violence within that society that you are targeting for a number of reasons. Induce violence. It causes horrible confusion and fear. And the usual reaction of a population to violence is simply make it stop. I don't care how you do it, but make it stop. If it means bringing in a fascistic organization like, oh, I don't know, the SS or the Brown Shirts or whomever, bring them in. Because I don't want the violence. So the first thing you do is to create violence, which is what Trump is trying to do. Trump and his filthy offspring... 
his two adult sons, personifications of walking cat urine. But this, this, this effort to cause the violence has begun. Please be aware of that. I know you are. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.